I believe it's common knowledge that flowers pollinate, or reproduce, through bees. The bee lands on the flower, gets some of that sweet flower pollen on it, then flies off to another flower, spreading the previous flower's ejaculate onto it. Flowers make nectar to sweeten the deal to bees, but there's a certain flower that goes about sweetening the deal another way. Humans like to mimic nature, whether that's trying to fly or how to run. It was only a matter of time before mimicry turned into strategy, imitating mating calls and other sexual allures to attract birds and animals, and I think you can see where this is going. Flowers don't make bee calls or anything, but what they can do is something more visual, like a nice big bee booty, making the flower an attractive place to stop by and clap some bumble cheeks. Which, finding out it's fake is probably a good thing, because while researching this, I found out that stingers aren't the only thing that break off during use. Drone bees, the only bees who reproduce with the queen, end up having their balls explode and their penis break off so it can lodge itself into the queen, preventing other bees from inseminating her. The process of bee ejaculation is explosive and sometimes audible to the human ear, akin to a popping sound after which the drone bee dies. I guess you could say, bees are one and done in more ways than one. Huh. Well, back to the flower. The bee sees the attractive rear end and tries to mate with it. In the process, it's covering itself in the flower's pollen. After a moment, the bee realizes it's not genuine real estate and the bee flies off. For the next few moments, it experiences a sort of no-nut, post-nut clarity. During this time, the bee travels far from the original flower, before eventually going back to pre-nut fogginess and trying the same thing on another flower. While aggressively having a little fumble and tumble with a flower that looks like a bumble, the bee ends up shaking off some of that previous flower's ejaculate, thus pollinating the flower. This whole process of getting the bee to angrily vacate the area is advantageous to the flowers because it helps eliminate the chance for the bee to pollinate the flower right next to it, which would be inbreeding. I think that's enough with bees. Let's turn to some lovely aquatic life, shall we? Flatworms are a type of worm that are flat. They're also what are called hermaphrodites, where they have both male and female components. So what do they have? They have a double-barreled penis and an entire body ready to be inseminated. That's right. Their entire bodies act as a fertilization site, and this creates the near comical situation where two worms end up penis jousting to get each other pregnant. The entire body is the target, so you'd think it'd be quick and dirty, but these fencing matches can last up to an hour long before one of them eventually loses and becomes the mother. Moving on to our fellow intelligence-oriented sea creatures, octopus in general are quite antisocial and sometimes commit sexual cannibalism, both of which make for an awkward mating session, to say the least. It also puts males in a risky situation because male cephalopods are smaller than females. For the big blue species, the female octopus will occasionally attack and suffocate the male when he comes in for a mating sesh. I guess you could say, the female will use her body as bait to lure a mate, which is the male's fate to suffocate. It's probably for these reasons why males have what are called hectocotyli, where one of their arms is modified to transport little capsules of sperm. This aids in the ability for the male to distance oneself from the female during mating, making mating for the male the equivalent to hand-holding. Except the female uses her... Well, anyway, that's not important. While the male big blue species of octopus developed a highly effective tag-no-tagbacks approach to mating, the Argonaut octopus have an even better strategy. Its penis is detachable. He can remain distant and watch his entire penis at the female. Which, I mean, good thing, right? He's so small, he's practically snack-sized. For the penile projectile, it really is about the motion in the ocean. If the motion's off a little bit, he misses his shot. Regardless, it's not like he can go reattach it or anything, so at this point, the male goes off and dies shortly after. It's worth noting it's pretty much the same for all octopods as well. Like back to the big blue octopus, if he gets away after mating, over the span of two to three months, his webbing grows and he begins to decline and die. So what have we learned today? According to nature, after reproduction, the male's purpose in life is accomplished. Males dying after procreation seems oddly common in nature. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Goodbye.